What is good, YouTube Quinway Basketball Analysis? Coming to y'all with that quick analysis. We going to talk about the Clippers and the Mavericks. The only game on yesterday and later on today. Give me a reason to subscribe. I'll be talking about the Bucks Nets game one, as that's the only game on currently on Saturday. But this was an excellent game for the most part. Very stagnant at 1.2, not knowing who was going to win this game, not knowing who was going to close this game. And a guy that a lot of people question, especially on TV, Kawhi Leonard showed up. The game was a one-point lead. Paul George hit the jumper to take the lead for the Clippers, and they was able to rely on Kawhi <laughs> to take them home, hitting some tough threes and some tough mid-rangers and really mixed up his bag. This game would have been over. He would have got hot in the, in the third quarter. He missed a couple easy ones in the third quarter I thought he was going to make. But a win is a win. You 45, 45.7% from the field showing why we look at you as a top five player, even on the defensive end. I think people haven't really been talking about how great his defense has been, rotating, helping, keeping Luka from shooting and crowding his space so that way he has to drive or has to pass. And even forcing Luka to be uncomfortable. I feel like they really rushed Luka and forced him to turn over the ball a lot or get the ball out of his hands and he just stood around and was out of the play. Luka was torching them this entire series. And for them to finally find the energy and, and the effort defensively from everybody to find ways to keep Luka away from the ball and to get the ball out of his hand so he don't beat you like he's been doing and make it tough. We seen it a lot in the last game, but they amped it up to me this game. Reggie Jackson, I feel like he got in foul trouble, some ticky-tack ones in the end, but he was huge for getting his team a good start. They didn't get blew out from the beginning like the other couple games. They was able to stay in it. And a lot of it had to do with Reggie Jackson, three-point shooting, and the fact that he was aggressive. They put him in the starting lineup and give them a, a bounce to give them a, a little bit more sauce to, to add to the table, and he did that. 25 points is a lot of points when people thought Reggie Jackson was done coming from Detroit the two, last two years. And for him to be starting and really was a big reason why they won this game is amazing because he came through for them. Like, Serge Ibaka was one of their biggest pickups. And he's not even playing um, at all because of injury. And we really wanted to know where was the Clippers going to go if they can't stop Luka and they got other guys like Finney Smith and Tim Hardaway and Chris Plasperzingas possibly they can give them buckets. Where are they going to get the scoring? And Nicholas Batum has to do better. They put him in the starting lineup to give them some more switchability, to give them more, you know, help side rotations. And he just can't knock down the shot. He was solid from three all season. This was one of the best three-point shooting, if not the best three-point shooting team in the league. And Nicholas Batum just can't make a shot. He really can't. He made the dunk that mattered to keep them with a cushion. But he needs to start knocking down a lot of those by the threes in mid-ranges. Because if he's not going to go into the basket and he's not really going to be a threat from the three-point line, then what is he really doing? Paul George, I feel like, got a pass because he made some good decisions early. But I feel like he has to be more consistent. Um, I, I feel like he has to be more aggressive and be more efficient. Um, I don't think he's been terrible this series. But if they want to send this team home, they have to get more out of Paul George. 20 points is just not enough. I love the fact that he rebounded the ball. I love the fact that he tried more defensively. But this is a guy you paying $200 million from. You need him to play like a top five player. When you think about the Clippers, you look at a top three duo. And I feel like Kawhi Leonard has played like a top five player so far in this series. And the reason why they're still in the series is because if they don't win Yesterday, they will be out of the playoffs. And Kawhi Leonard stepped up and answered the call. But he's going to need more help. He, he really is because this Mavericks team, even when they were struggling, even when they was missing shots, they were still in the game. So that just shows you how much effort it's going to take to put this team out um, as Dallas has a lot of firepower. 
Boban, I feel like, was overrated. Um, he did give them a post threat, but he missed a lot of those layups. He missed a lot of those putbacks. And if you're going to be bigger and taller than everybody, you got to be stronger. You got to be more physical. You can't just be grabbing boards and can't finish. You can't just be grabbing boards and can't put it in the basket. An offensive rebound means nothing if you can't put the basket, put the ball in the basket. And it don't even have to be him. But if he's going to be taking shots around the basket, he has to be making them. He's the tallest player in the series, and he can't even make a, 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 a layup enough. 12 points is not enough for Boban. He, he, he has to do better, or they have to go in a different direction. Finney Smith got hot, but they're going to need that throughout the entire game, not in spurts if they want to beat the Clippers, because the Clippers you know, are a team that can get hot too, as we've seen as they close the game. Luka just has to be smarter. I feel like they threw a lot of different looks at him, and he didn't respond well. I feel like he rushed a lot. I feel like he forced a lot, and I feel like he just disappeared. Luka was just confident and cocky in the first couple games, and now Luka just looks like he, he just doesn't know what to do, even defensively. They had a lot of Luka one-on-one, and they were just torching Luka in the fourth quarter, and that's just not a good look. Everybody was praising Luka, and he was feeling himself. But every time he loses, it seems like he goes into depression. He looks like he, he's lost. And I feel like he looked like that on the court because I didn't really know what Luka was at in the fourth quarter. I really didn't. In the closeout game, that's a must win at home because it's the last game in the series at home. And Luka disappears. He hit a couple shots late in the fourth quarter, but it didn't matter because they was basically letting him get to the basket and finish. His sufficiency level looks better because they gave him those buckets. You know, they didn't even try to block it. They didn't even try to contest it. They were just trying to get the ball so they can inbound it and drop more clock. And Luca's stats look better because of it. 29 points, that wasn't the case. He was struggling. He was literally struggling. He didn't look dominant in this game. He looked it bad to me. And that's crazy because you need Luca to be superstar Luca. Because that's why they're in this series. That's why they was up in this series. And if he looks like that, they're going to lose game seven. They are. And that's unfortunate because they worked so hard to have a chance to win it. And they they, they let it get away. Luka didn't step up and, and, and put him out. He let them put him uh, on the brink of elimination. And now as anybody's game in game seven, I still do believe that Zubac, he has to continue to play strong. Um, he, if he's not going to be great defensively, he has to be better on the boards and he has to be more active on the screens just to be a threat and, and just to really give him a purpose to be out there. Because like I said, they have no Serge Ibaka and they're not playing boogie at all. So they're going to need more production out of Zubak um, if they're going to really be solid, all around, well-balanced type of team. And he, he just going to have to be more of a threat in the paint. And I think that that'd be important. Tim Hardaway Jr. got to step up. I feel like he had some games where he looked amazing. He had some games where he just was bad. And they're going to need him to have one of his best games. He was stepping it up, and it looked like the Mavericks was going to run away with it. And then he took a couple bad ones and missed the layup that he should have made. And that was basically the end of the Mavericks winning the game. And he was making big noise. He was getting excited. He was feeling himself. But when they needed him the most in the fourth quarter, he kind of flopped a little bit, and it was unfortunate because I was liking him as a six-man-of-the-year candidate. I was liking him in the first two games of the series, but he just comes and goes, and you just can't do that when it's the best of four. Whoever wins four games win this series, and now, like I said, they find themselves on a chance to be out of the playoffs, and he missed a couple crucial shots and plays that could have sealed the game for the Mavericks, and instead they lost it. And now they're on the brink of elimination. And Porzingis, what is he doing? Um, Porzingis has been bad all series. Defensively, he's been bad to me. Offensively, he got a couple dunks, got a couple wide open threes. But he has to be more dominant. If Boban is soft and can't finish around the rim, and Porzingis is not giving you no inside present, but not enough outside present either, then you're really getting nothing out of your bigs. And you just can't have that happen in the playoffs. You need your best players playing their best. And Porzingis is supposed to be the second best player on this team, and he just hasn't been. He really hasn't. And that sucks because it makes it tougher on Luka, who looks lost. 
um, the last quarter in game five and game six. And if they ain't going to be able to get their groove going, if they ain't going to really be able to take over and kill them from the perimeter and be able to mix it up in the inside from time to time, the Mavericks really don't have nowhere to go because Josh Richardson hasn't been doing nothing either. This supposed to be your third best player, a guy that can handle the ball and make decisions and knock down some tough shots and knock down some shots um, and mix it up for this Dallas team. He has been a dud. So far in the regular season, it has been a no-show to me in the postseason so far. And if you're going to pay these two guys to compliment and take some some steam off of Luka, they have to do it. But they haven't. And I don't feel like they have done it the entire series to me. And that's a, a struggle point when you're trying to build a team when you think these guys will compliment and play well off Luka, but also bring the best out of him with floor spacing and defense. And they're not giving you nothing defensively, but they're not really giving you nothing offensively either. It kind of makes you wonder, like, where is the Mavericks going to go? Somebody's going to step up. Somebody's going to play well. Or is Luka going to literally have to carry and drag this team to the second round? And then I wonder, what will they do against the Jazz who kill you with everybody? And this team don't even know who their second and third best player is every night. And that's a terrible situation to be in. But Kawhi Leonard was amazing. He really has been the best player in the series to me when you look at the entire series. And he has a chance to show that he's still here and one of the best players by winning game seven on Sunday and sending the message. He said, I don't even want to go home. And he proved that in the fourth quarter. Now he has to do it for the entire series on Sunday. We'll see if they can get it done. We'll see at the end of the day what happens. But you know, I picked the Clippers in six. That was wrong. They blew game five. They blew game one because Kawhi Leonard missed some shots that they usually make, and they would have been up six, four to two. But they find themselves in the elimination game where they have to win. They have to play their best basketball on both ends of the court, and they have to get it done unless they're going to be the team staying at home after game seven. But I do look at their defense. They have played better defensively than the Mavericks. They have missed a lot of open shots like the Mavericks. But Kawhi Leonard has stepped up when it matters most. And he is the veteran. He is the MVP of the finals. And he has been one of the best defenders in the league for years. And he's showing that old Kawhi right now. He had a day of rest for Saturday. He has to be locked in and engaged from the start of the game to put this Mavericks team out. Because like I told you, this Mavericks team, they get cocky. They get confident. They feel themselves. And they can drop some points on you. But Clippers have been smarter, they have been ready, and they are the veteran team. And they should be able to find a way to steal this game and go to the second round. I do wonder how far the Clippers can go if they can't get consistent production out of their role players. And they're not going to get the superstar uh, treatment of Paul George. If Paul George isn't going to play like a top 10 player and these role players are not going to be able to make shots, the Clippers might not go far in the playoffs, even if they make it out of their first round. And if they don't step up in game seven, they're not even going to make it out of the second round. But let me know, do you think the Clippers win it? Do they lose it? Is they overrated? it? Is they underrated? it? Is it because of injuries? Or do you think the Mavericks are just better? Do you think Luka will respond and show that he's a legend and, and put out Kawhi Leonard in the game seven when everybody thought the Clippers would win it? Or do you would Kawhi Leonard going to show up and say, you know what? This is me. This is my team. I wanted all these trades to happen. I wanted Rondo. I wanted Paul George. I wanted Serge Ibaka. I wanted Reggie Jackson. I wanted Ty Lue to be our coach over Doc Rivers. This is my team. They built it around me. Let me show them why. And if he does that, then I look different about this team. But it all depends on what happens Sunday. Obviously, I'll be covering it like the whole playoff so far. And we'll see what happens. Other than that, stay tuned because I'll be giving you all my reactions to the Bucks next game in a couple hours. Quinn Wade, basketball analysis signing out. And let me know what you guys think about this series so far.